بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الأطهار وصحابته الأخيار ما تعاقب الليل والنهار يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله, كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة الله أكبر 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 الحمد لله Our praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى alone Our praise is due to Allah for His majesty سبحانه وتعالى and for his kamal and infinite perfection, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is Ar-Rahman, he is the most gracious, he is the creator, the guider, the sustainer and nourisher, the originator, the designer, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is glorified by everything in the heavens and the earth. Yusabbihu lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. And he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is ever giving to his servant and pardoning of his mistakes, subhanahu. The people sin and they transgress and Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet continues to provide for them. And that is from his generosity in his rahmah, subhanahu, subhanahu. And we send peace and blessings upon our beloved Sayyidina Muhammadin, alayhi salatu wa salam, the Messenger of Allah, the Seal of the Prophets, the Imam of the Messengers, the best of Allah's creation, the Master of the children of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. The mercy of Allah to all of mankind, the perfect example, the perfect human being alayhi salatu wasalam. May Allah send infinite peace and blessings upon him, his spouses, his household, his descendants, and upon his Sahaba and Gadir Khulafa, and upon those who follow in their path. Ameen. Alhamdulillah, we are celebrating the day of Eid. And this celebration is a celebration of Allah's guidance. People celebrate many things in this world. They celebrate their achievements. They celebrate individuals. They celebrate moments in their lives. And the greatest celebration that a person or the greatest thing that a person can celebrate is the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything will perish. Kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha. Everything will perish. Our wealth, our health, our bodies, our families, our homes, our careers, none of these things are permanent. All of these things will perish. And the one thing that, is, that will remain with us is our piety and the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted each and one of us. That guidance is our greatest and most valuable possession. And we must hold on to it with our utmost effort. We must strive for it, learn about it, act and live in accordance to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَٰلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Tell them, O Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, that the favor of Allah and His mercy, let them be happy about that. Let them celebrate that. فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ It is better and more valuable 
and long-lasting and, and more beneficial to them than everything in their possession, than everything that they accumulate. And Allah uses the present tense of accumulating because by nature as human beings, we are in a consistent effort of accum accumulating things in this world, accumulating wealth, accumulating possessions, accumulating property, accumulating you know, clothes, and when any other object in this world, status and fame and recognition. And the best of all of these things is the accumulation of guidance, striving to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and adhering to this guidance of Allah. Whoever has this deen and is steadfast upon it and dies with la ilaha illallah, Allah will replenish for them everything that they sacrificed. Every cent, every moment, every effort, every sweat, every moment of sadness, not even a thorn pricks them. Not the slightest of pain, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them for their sacrifices and replenish what they have spent in the way of Allah be it their time, be it their effort. But if a person has no guidance, they've accumulated every form of success in this world and attained every form of success, but they do not have the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's what they chose to compromise. That's what they chose is the least important thing to them, the worship and the devotion of Allah. That person, Nothing will restore for them the iman that they compromised. Nothing will restore for them the deen that they gave up. And the Prophet ﷺ, he illustrates this in a hadith. He says, يُؤْتَى بِأَنْعَمِ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا مِنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ The most blessed man of this world who is among the people of hellfire will be brought on the day of, hellfire, on the day of qiyamah. And he will be put into the fire for only a moment. And then he will be brought forth and it will be said to him, Hal qat? Have you ever seen good? Mind you that this man is the most blessed man in this world. He had it all. The fame, the power, the wealth, the looks, the pleasures, the everything that a person desires of this world, this man had it. And he is put into the fire for only a brief moment. And he will say, La, Ya Rabb. He will say, No, Ya Allah, I've never seen any good in my life. I've never felt any pleasure in my life. Everything of this dunya is forgotten in one moment of the hellfire, wa na'udhu billah. To show us that this dunya is but a fading dream that is, does not last and is forgotten. And that the akhirah is better in quality and longer in time and last in, 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 in quantity. And then the, the Prophet ﷺ says the opposite man will be brought forth. That a man will be brought forth from the most afflicted people in this dunya, but from the people of Jannah. And he will be put into, the, into Jannah for a brief moment and he will be asked, have you ever seen hardship in your life? Have you ever experienced pain? Have you ever experienced illness? This man had it all, had all the problems. He was ill, family problems, financial problems, social problems, stress, and so on and so forth. He had, it, the, he had the most difficult trials in this world. But he is a man of Jannah, he adhered to the deen of Allah and he was steadfast upon that path. And he will be asked, have you ever experienced pain? Have you ever seen hardship? He will say, la ya Rabb. He swears by Allah's name. And this is not out of exaggeration, but this is a reality for him. That compared to what he's experiencing in Jannah and the reality that he is in the Akhirah, that this dunya is but a dream. Whatever happened in it is forgotten. And he doesn't recall. And he says, Ya Rabb, I have never seen any hardship. I have never seen any pain. 
And so that is the worth of a person's deen. And this Eid is a celebration of that deen. And it's a reminder for us to prioritize our deen. To celebrate the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to adhere to it and to be steadfast upon it. And to not compromise our deen for worldly benefits or for mere pleasures. And that is the example of our Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, whose example we commemorate throughout the Hajj rituals, and that we com commemorate by our sacrifices of Udhiyah. And there are many lessons from the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam, and one brief lesson that we can take is that when Ibrahim alayhi salam was cast into the fire by his people after calling them to the oneness of Allah and to his obedience, and he was rejected by his father and his entire village. And they, and they decided to burn him alive and humiliate him. Although he was only a young man who did no crime except call them to the way of Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he put his reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembered Allah. And the remembrance of Allah is light, it's nur. In the midst of chaos and confusion, the light that guides a believer is the remembrance of Allah. It illuminates their heart. It inspires their mind. It guides their behavior. And it gives them clarity in the midst of all that confusion. Without the remembrance of Allah, the person is in an everlasting fog. And they are, are in an everlasting haze. Trying to navigate things. But things are unclear to them. Every day seems like there's no purpose, there's no objective. They fulfill their desires, but yet they are unsatisfied. Yet they feel an emptiness and a void in their lives and in their hearts. That void and that emptiness is filled by the remembrance of Allah and nothing else can fill it. And so Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, when cast into the fire and in the, midst of, and in the face of this great threat, of being burnt alive for, the, for calling people to the oneness of Allah, he says, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. He says, Allah is enough for me and he is the best protector. And so the believer must live with this theme of always relying on Allah and always remembering Allah and increasing the mentioning of Allah's remembrance in their life every day. Having a regular connection with Allah, having an, an, an intimate relationship with Allah where they plead and express their needs and dependency to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They express their complaints and their struggles to Allah. And they will find in that, humili in that humility and in that dua and supplication, they will find instant relief, an instant ease, an instant confidence. They will find guidance in, 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 in all their matters. And so let this Eid be an Eid where we revive our intentions and our, in our, in our efforts to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly and mention his name frequently. We ask Allah to bless our Eid, to bless this Ummah, to forgive our sins. أَقُولُ مَا سَمِعْتُمْ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم وأتبعوا السيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن a last, a last point that we all need to remember frequently is that as time progresses the trials and tribulations will increase. That deception and confusion within society will increase. And the Prophet ﷺ, he told this, he foretold this in the hadith, That whoever among you lives after me will see great dispute and differences among people. And these ikhtilafat, they continue until the end of time. 
that there's constant division and confusion and disagreement among human beings and among societies. And so, and this will continue until the day of Qiyamah. This will continue until the day of Qiyamah, until there are two parties. Fariqun, a party of Iman. La nifaqa There is no hypocrisy in that party. Their Iman is whole and they have absolute conviction in, the, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a party of kufr, la imana fi. There will be no hypocrisy. There will either be a party of pure iman without any hypocrisy, and a party of pure disbelief without any iman. And this, so society is heading towards this end, where there will be two clear parties. And so the strategy of shaitan to misguide people is one of two. It is either by shubuhat, by confusion and deception. And shubha in Arabic, it means for things to be, to resemble one another. So he will make truth appear, he will make falsehood appear to be true. He will make corruption and cover it under labels of vir virtue. Present it as a just and noble and virtuous thing but it will be pure evil and pure deception and corruption. And so that is the strategy of shaitan, is that he doesn't present evil to people up front. Rather, it is covered under the veil or under the, with the cover of truth and virtue. But it's, at its core, it's complete deception and evil. And the other strategy of shaitan is to mislead people with their shahawat their desires, to intoxicate them with their desire. Because once a person is intoxicated and consumed by their desires, their mind loses the ability to see things objectively. They can't find truth. They only see things according to what pleases them. Everything is relative. There is no objective truth. As long as it satisfies my needs and my wants, then that is the truth. And we see, subhanAllah, that Shubuhat and shahawat are increasing as time goes. And we see that the intuitions that people have have become issues of doubt. And so this is all part of the ikhtilafat that is, that is going to come with time. And so the Prophet والسلام, he gives us the guidance, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ and so, I, 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 and so you should adhere to my example, adhere to this deen, to the example of the Messenger of Allah والسلام, to the timeless teachings of Islam, and to the example of his guided khulafa and the early generations of this deen. And so, with this, the Prophet والسلام, commanded us to learn, to educate ourselves. We are in need of knowledge more than we are in need of food and wealth. But yet many people do not recognize that. Knowledge is our most valuable possession. It is by which we find steadfastness in our deen. It is by which we learn to live our, to live our lives according to the commands of Allah. And so let each one of us strive to educate himself and, and prioritize the knowledge of this deen and do not take it lightly. As we prioritize our jobs, and we prioritize our health, and we prioritize the necessities of life, and may Allah increase us in these matters, and bless for us our health and wealth, we need to also prioritize our deen and the knowledge of this deen. And second, the Prophet ﷺ advised us to adhere to the word, to worship. Badru bil a'mal, hasten to good deeds. And so we must, during this confusion and, and, and this deception that we see in the world, and the overstimulation of human minds and human desires, we must find fortitude in the worship of Allah, in our masajid. We cannot solve every problem that's out there. We can definitely give da'wah, and that is our obligation. But we do not, we will not be able to solve everything. But what we can do is strive to worship Allah, establish our salah, attend the masajid, be in righteous company, and do worship, perform dhikr, give sadaqah, and so on and so forth. And these ibadat, they will be our fortress. They will give us steadfastness and calmness and relief in the midst of everything that is going on in the world. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all steadfastness Amen. and make this year a year of blessings and khair and rahmah Amen. for us all, our families and the entire ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease the affairs of our brethren who are oppressed around the world. Amen. May Allah relieve them of their hardships and remove their burdens. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant honor and strength to this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our hearts upon his deen. Uni unify our ranks and remove fitna and turmoil between us, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim. وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والحمد لله رب العالمين وبارك الله فيك